Over the past couple of months, the cost of solar panel raw materials has come down by nearly 50%. And as a result, the world's three biggest panel manufacturers have slashed costs by 30%. Many people say solar panels themselves will fall in price by 50% this year. And as a result, solar will have its best year ever. So how much solar do we actually need to power the entire world? Well, it's actually a lot less than you'd think. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. I'm the Electric Viking. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for supporting me and supporting the whole process of this whole cancer scenario. I'm really, really appreciative of your support. It's been amazing. Solar is, in my view, the number one thing we should be focusing on when it comes to renewable energy. I mean, look how many people who have EVs have also installed solar. And now that it's come down in price and will continue to drop in price, plus now that its efficiency has also continued to improve, it's just a no-brainer. I mean, for example, if solar can work so incredibly well in parts of Northern Europe, I mean, if they can, if it can work so well in the UK, in Germany, even in Denmark and Sweden, then, well, it can work at an incredible level in places like India, Africa, Southeast Asia, and Australia. So I was thinking, how many solar panels do we actually need for the world's entire electricity demand? And how much of the world's area or land mass would that actually cover? Initially, I was thinking, oh, it'd be a lot, right? It'd be heaps. But actually, it's really not. An international research group says that raw materials and land availability do not present any barrier for global energy systems based around solar. I mean, in other words, if we focus on solar as the number one driver of energy generation, then actually there are no barriers. The group said that forecasts for PV growth will not have their access on utility scale power plants and instead we should consider vertical PV, agrivoltaics, and floating PV as the source of future big market volume. This means that solar energy, theoretically, only needs to cover 0.3% of the world's land mass, 0.3%, in order to have enough energy for everyone in the world. And what's most amazing about this is the fact that it's so beneficial in farms. People Now farmers are starting to use solar panels and solar farms as shelter for their animals. And actually the grass grows even better underneath the solar panels than beside it. So it's simply a no-brainer. And this conclusion comes from new research by a group of academic institutions led by Aarhus University in Denmark, of all places. And the researchers say that raw materials and land availability do not present any barriers to PV or to solar in its race to dominate the global energy landscape. PV Magazine Australia says, that the scientists claim that for an average annual generation for solar of 1,370 kilowatt hours slash kilowatt, 38 million hectares would be needed. They noted that the world has a total area of 13,000 million hectares. Hence, our current electricity consumption could be supplied by solar PV covering only 0.3% of the world's available land. But the crazy thing is that 33% of the world's land mass is desert that we do nothing with and can't do anything with. Well, right now anyway. So 33% of the world's land mass is desert. We only need 0.3% of the world's land mass for enough solar the entire world to have all the energy it needs. In other words, we only need to cover 1% of the world's deserts with solar. That's it. That's crazy. And these researchers have said that conventional assumptions about global PV or solar deployment for the years to come are generally based on land cover and cost projections that chiefly consider classic densely packed utility scale power plants. They claim such projections ignore the potential of vertical PV floating installations, agrivoltaics, and building integrated arrays, as well as other innovative solar configurations. Nevertheless, these embryonic applications show that there is still room for innovation 
at the system level. In summary, although available land can limit solar PV at local levels, it will not be a limitation at a larger scale. And therefore, we recommend that models include accurate and up-to-date constraints based on materials and land availability. The scientists described their findings in a publication called Solar Photovoltaics Are Ready to Power a Sustainable Future, which was recently published in Joule. They said the efficiency of solar cell technologies will improve enormously in the future and that will help to address land limitation issues in specific locations. Yeah, of course, there will be some places in the world that don't have deserts nearby. In fact, there's many of them. But there are solutions to that, and that's the whole point. They also claim that raw material availability might only be an issue for thin film PV technology and not for crystalline silicon cells, which currently account for 95% of the global market. Now, thin film is is the kind of product where you can just stick it on a window, right? And you don't even know it's there. You can cover your car in thin film. So it is a new niche product that I think is going to gain a lot of steam. But that said, the main market right now is currently for crystalline silicon cells. Thanks to the increase in efficiency and the use of thinner contact fingers, the use of silver per watt has significantly reduced in the last years and copper or aluminium could be used as a replacement if necessary, the research group said. The non-cell materials in PB, glass, plastic, aluminium, concrete, and steel are not expected to represent a limit either. The researchers also reported that solar maintained a learning rate of 23% since 1976, and that the cost of the solar technology has dropped by 23% every time capacity has doubled. What happens then if we double capacity again from where we're at, which we did over the last two years? Well, we increase it again by another 23%. As you can see, this is happening fast. They said, given that the learning rate is based on module prices, it also includes the elimination of big parts of the margins in PV manufacturing due to strong competition between suppliers. That competition we can see it playing out right now. The world's three biggest manufacturers of solar panels are all based in China, and they're all in a price war right now, which is leading to massively reduced solar panel prices. The scientists said that the main factors for cost reduction are efficiency increases, economies of scale, making more solar panels, and scientific work on silicon materials. So far, that has led to reducing input significantly in terms of the actual materials used. The study also presents some challenges that PV or solar should face in the next decade. These include the creation of regulatory frameworks that reduced soft costs, reducing capital expenditure, enabling the electrification of the other, enabling the electrification of other energy sectors via proper tax schemes, and strengthening research on improving PV efficiency and reliability. We only need to cover 1% of the world's deserts. Imagine if we covered 10% of the world's deserts. Imagine what the future would look like. Imagine what all these cities in the world that are polluted with smog and cancer-causing particles would look like. Imagine what it would be like for billions of people to breathe purely clean air when they've likely never ever done so before. Imagine the enormous improvements in health. Imagine a world better for our children. My friends, it is most certainly coming. And the key reason for that are renewables and the world moving toward solar and wind and battery storage at a rate faster than ever before. It's happening right now. And we need to be grateful because the reality is, we live in the best time in human history. Thank you for watching.